Hey everybody, it's Brooke with The Butter and Home and welcome to my messy kitchen. Today we are sharing with you all of our delicious secrets on how to make the best homemade cheese straws. So stay with us, let's get started. Okay, we have two separate bowls and in this bowl I have two cups of self-rising flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Actually, I think I put a quarter teaspoon in there. I'm going to put just a bit more. We like our cheese straws kind of spicy, but you make your own decisions as to how spicy you want them. But there's just something about that cheese and spice together. And I'm using my trusty sifter. <laughs> To sift those together. Now I'm just going to set that to the side and in a large bowl I'm putting in a cup of butter softened room temperature. I usually like to let it sit out overnight. So that's two sticks of softened butter unsalted because we have already salted our flour mixture. And then two cups of grated sharp cheddar cheese, which has all also been softened. <laughs> and I let it sit out overnight as well. I try to make these in the morning. So I give them at least like an eight hour soften time. And with a hand mixer, we're just gonna cream these two things together. So bear with me, it's gonna get a little loud. start off on low and then work my way up <laughs> so that I don't sling cheese or butter all over my kitchen. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to scrape down the sides and give it one more mix. Now we're going to slowly add in our flour, salt, and cayenne pepper. And I'm going to do it probably in thirds. Now your dough is going to get kind of stiff. So we start out on low, not to blow flour everywhere. <laughs> and to slowly incorporate that in. We're doing two things here. We're adding in the flour mixture and we are aerating the cheese straw mixture. That incorporation of the air provided by the hand mixer helps them puff up and get nice and crispy. Added in that flour and mixed it until the cheese got tacky again. I'll tell you what, we're going to do this nice and slow, so I'm just going to do this in halves instead of thirds. So that's the rest of our flour mixture. There we go. Only made a slight mess. <laughs> I 
So now we are good to start getting these guys together. Let me get a sheet pan. And we're going to talk about a couple of different options on what you can do with these. So ideally, one of the things that I like to do is to pipe them out. However, I find that the older that I get, the harder it is to pipe them. My hands just don't work like they used to. They just don't. So, I'm going to show you one of the ways that my mama always used to make them. And then we're going to talk about another way to make them too. So, I got my parchment. And I like to wad it up. It makes it easier to lay flat on my sheet pan. So, the good old-fashioned in my house tried and true way to do this is to make them into like a cookie. So, we'll take enough for about a one-inch ball and we will roll that out and put it on our parchment and then my mama always just took a fork and pushed it down and it may stick and that's okay and then she would cross hatch it the other way to flatten it out and it made a nice little cookie like that now <clears throat> here is one other option you can take the same just a little bit more than a one inch ball and you can roll it into a long roll and and y'all guys i'm showing y'all this because this is no special equipment needed okay this is just your hands and a fork um, because a lot of people don't have a fancy uh, piping bag or I've got a, like <laughs> something that looks like a meat grinder that I just push mine through to make a pretty long stem and then I cut them and bake them. So we're showing you the easy at home, no special equipment required here. So I just kind of roll them out into that long, thin uh, stick rather and then take a fork and just carefully do the same thing that we did to the cookie and press it out. If you have a little pasta roller, you can use it too. And then I'll come back in with my fork and just cut them in one inch or so sections. And then I just separate them out on my baking sheet. Now, now you have pretty little cheese straws. So we're going to bake these up and I'm going to also push some through my extruder and show you um, that there really is no difference, but we're going to uh, make these and come back and show you how perfect they are. They're going to go into a 375 degree oven for about anywhere from 12 to 14 minutes. Now, these thicker ones may need a little bit longer. So there's two things you can do. One, you can roll them out a little smaller, like a smaller ball, and press them a little harder and a little thinner. And you could also spray your fork before you do this. It's just early and my brain is not working. <laughs> But we're gonna cook these up and we'll be back to show you the finished product. So stay with us. So I just wanna take a minute and show you my setup. This is my little unit that I bought off Amazon. I'll try to link it in the show notes. But it has uh, different attachments to put on the front. It also works as a meat grinder. It has a plunger. It uh, suctions really well to the counter, has a lock on the side and a hand crank so you can press that plunger down and then crank those out and then simply cut them off and put them on your sheet pan. 
So that one's kind of small. I'll probably redo him. But I just wanted to show you um, another option, and I'll link this nice thing because you can use it for all kind of things. We are back. We have finished our cooling time, and this one recipe made about four dozen, but I make them kind of small, and y'all, they turned out delicious. So I just want to show you a couple of things. So here are the ones that I did like a cookie, and it's a nice, crispy wafer. And these guys took about a 15 minute cook time. And here are some of the ones that I rolled out and just kind of flattened with my hand. And then these are the ones that I rolled out and pressed with a fork. So you have three different variations that you can make of that um, nice crispy cheese straw with no special equipment. And then here are the ones that I used my extruder that I showed y'all. So you don't, you see, it's not much difference in the finished product. I mean, they're all really good options. So yes, it's nice to have a piping bag um, if your hands will permit. It is nice to have like that crank extruder like I had um, because I make these a lot. But if you just make them once a year, you can do the other options with no special equipment. And y'all, they are fantastic. Mmm. Almost as good as my mama's. And now, I don't really do that much different than my mama. I think I cook them at a different temperature than she does. She's more patient than I am. <laughs> but when I say they're almost as good as hers, I say that because food is always better when somebody else cooks it, right? But these make a great treat to take to a shower um, or a potluck or even a holiday party. Everybody, most everybody that I know loves cheese straws. And we just showed y'all an easy way to make them. So we hope you'll make them and you'll love them as much as we do. This recipe, like all of our others, can be found over at thebutteredhome.com. We would love it if you gave us a visit over there. Also, if you're not already, make sure you're following us on all of our social channels. We have a really good time and we want you here for it. And as always, if you're not already, make sure you are following us over at YouTube. And when you get there, hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified when we drop new videos like this one. Hope y'all make these cheese straws and love them as much as we do. Because I know Big D is a happy man that I made them today and filmed it. <laughs> y'all have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time from all of us here at The Buttered Home. We love you. Bye.